So this is just to show off what we will be making in the video. I can click on the screen, drag down to the right, and this player character octagon at the bottom will shoot off and start bouncing around the screen. It'll collide with the edges, collide with these shapes that we've added. And this is the basic building blocks of a really satisfying mobile game. And as a disclaimer, I'm going to link in the description to a mobile game that this is essentially copying, even though I did not know that it existed until I started working on this. And this game in the tutorial doesn't look like that game yet, but hopefully it will over the course of a few videos. And so I want to give a lot of credit to that. The game is called Ultra Flow, has a ton of downloads, and it's proof that simple ideas like this are worth pursuing. And I'd love to show people how to make it. So that's what this video and the future videos will be about, and hopefully you enjoy it. So at the end of this video, I'll upload this project to GitHub and link to it in the description so you'll be able to look at it directly. This is my new project. I've already made a couple changes that I'm going to walk you through. The first of which is that I changed the size of the window. So if you go into project settings and scroll down to display window, I have changed the width and the height to 576 by 1024. So that's why you see in this that this blue line is outlining a more mobile view instead of a desktop view. So that's the first change. I've also added an input for click, which I've set to left button. And we'll look later at the options for making sure that you can actually click with your finger if this was on a mobile device. But for now, the mouse button will be fine. And then back under general settings, back under window, where we changed to 576 and 1024, I've also taken the stretch mode set it to 2D instead of disabled, and the aspect to keep. And that'll make sure that it, it adjusts the view regardless of the size of the device that we're using. Okay, so now if I run the project, I can't, well, I can't run the project because I don't have any scenes yet. So the first thing we're going to do is create a game scene. So I just clicked on 2D scene, game. Under game, we're going to create a, I guess, kind of a, I use no 2D as kind of a folder. We'll call that collisions. This is where all of our collisions for the level are going to be. And then we would also be instancing the child uh, player node. So we would have the player, which we can just go ahead and create. New scene, another 2D scene. Well, actually, it's going to be a 2D scene, but we don't want a no 2D. For the player, we're actually going to use something called rigid body 2D. It'll tell you, it'll kind of guide you through the things that you need to add for this rigid body. But uh, we're going to walk through this a little slowly. So basically, the idea behind the rigid body is that it gives us access to physics. But there's some of these physics we want, some of them we don't want. So the first thing we're going to do is take the gravity scale, and we're going to set it to zero. And we're going to add a physics material. So click on physics material where it says empty, new physics material. Click on it again to expand those options. And we get a couple more for bounce. We're going to set it all the way to one so that it just bounces all over the screen whenever it collides with things. I think we can turn up our contacts reported under under these options because I and maybe contact monitor as well and I think that helps us look for the things that we are colliding with. We don't want to be sleeping. We want to make sure that our linear velocity starts out at 0 0 because we're going to be editing that through code. I believe that we can set our dampening to 0 as well, but we'll look at that and see see what changes in a minute, but I think that'll help We'll just see how that affects things. So I think this is what it's going to look like. But once we actually start bouncing around, we'll figure out pretty quickly if that's correct. So the node has no shape, so it can't collide or interact with other objects. So very simple. We just need to start by adding a sprite. I already have this player.png in my project, and you'll be able to see that in GitHub or just use your own. It's just this simple little hexagon. Actually, it's an octagon, sorry. So I have that shape in there now. Here's the player still within its scene. Oh, yeah, we can rename rigid body 2D to player. And now we're actually going to add a collision shape. Collision shape 2D. Over here in the options under shape where it's empty, you can hit new circle shape. Even though it's an octagon, we, just, we want it to bounce around as if it's a circle. You can play around with exactly how you want that to be. But Okay, so if we save this, I always try to create a folder whenever I save scenes and say scenes, player.tsen, we can save that there. We also have to save this game scene, same folder. And now that we have the player, we can instance child scene under game, click player, open it, and now the player is in the game scene. And we should be able to drag it around. So we can drag it wherever we want to start off with. 
Now if I try to run the project and we select the game scene to be our default opening, now our player is in the scene and we can see what the game actually looks like. But we can't interact with the player yet. Oh, the last thing I'll point out, if you're wondering how I changed the background color of the editor under project settings, and then if you scroll down to environment, it's this default clear color here. I think it starts off as that kind of off-white color, that, that light gray, but I've just changed it to this darker color because I think it looks a lot better. Now I have, well, I'll talk about that in a minute. Let's go ahead and add some code to the player character. So if we go to the rigid body node and hit this attach a new script, we can place this. Let's actually put this in a new folder. So I'm going to go up on this path to scenes. We're going to create scripts player.gd script and we create that there. Now the code for the player is actually really simple because the rigid body gives us so much kind of physics out of the box I guess. What we want is that we touch somewhere on the screen, we drag our finger and then we release and then the ball shoots off kind of in the opposite direction of the the pull. It's like we're pulling it back and then launching it almost. So first touch will represent where we first touch the screen and then release will be where we release. It's pretty self-explanatory. So we basically just check for that click twice. Is action just pressed? Click. And that's where we'll set the first touch and then if input is action I don't know why it's not auto-filling. Just released. So just pressed, just released. Both of them are looking for that click. Just as a reminder, the click is referencing in project settings. If you go to input map, and scroll down I've added and you should also add click and then left mouse button if you don't know how to do that you just type in the action you want up here I typed in click add it and then under each action you hit the plus button and then you can add the the key inputs for those actions first touch we're gonna set this to get global mouse position very simple the next one we're gonna do the same thing release equals get global mouse position Not so bad. And then we're going to use these two things. So assuming that we've released our finger, then we can assume that we already have a first touch in place. And we will set our direction equal to negative release minus first touch dot normalize. Now normalize will just take whatever this vector is, whatever the direction is, and it's going to break it down to its most simple uh, format. It, normalizing it just means, maybe it'll give us a little summary. No, it, it's just taking it down to its base units. That way we can expand it with speed on our own because if I, if I drag my finger farther, and we'll look at this in a future video, we probably will start using that. If I drag my finger farther, I could make it go faster. Uh, if I drag it shorter, it would go slower, something like that. But for right now, I just want it to go the same speed regardless of how far you have dragged your finger. So now we can just edit the linear velocity of the player directly, and we can set it equal to direction times delta times we'll start with 30,000. The main reason we have to do this large number for 30,000 is because we are using delta in the process to make sure that our speed is the same regardless of frame rate. So now if I run the project and I'm going to click here in the center, drag down and release, the ball takes off in the direction that I dragged it or in the opposite direction. So I can drag here and come down and to the left and then it'll shoot off up and to the right. So that's exactly what I want, but what I don't want is for it to be able to go off screen. So this is how we're gonna get started with the collisions. There's this cool thing in Godot called poly, or Collision Polygon. Collision Polygon 2D. It's a little, I'll say that it feels a little hacky. I don't know if this is ideal. I'm not, I'm not championing for this necessarily, but it, it feels okay to me because it works really well. But basically you create the Collision Polygon 2D, and now we have a vector array or an array of these vectors, and they're just position nodes. And it's a little tricky, it doesn't tell you this, but when you when you have the Collision Polygon 2D, you click on it, make sure it's selected, and then you click within the game window, and now you're placing these points that are filling up that array of vectors, and they're gonna represent the boundaries of the collision shape. So I'm just gonna go around the edge of the screen. You kinda have to look for that faint blue line and now this part's a little tricky, and this is the part that definitely feels a little hacky, but we need the collision shape to be on the outside, not the inside. So however you, however you want to work through this and get the shape working, 
Uh, it can be a little tricky. And like I said, this, this is not ideal, I don't think. But And then I just click. Whenever you want to finish the Polygon 2D, I have this node here. I'm just going to click on it. And then it fills in. You can kind of see the collision shape has appeared. So that's very hacky, but it's just to get us started really quickly. And now if I bounce off, that did not work. Okay, so I made a mistake. The collision polygon 2D actually needs to be a child of a static body. So I'm going to create static body 2D underneath this collisions node folder thing. And then I'm going to grab that collision polygon 2D and I'm going to drag it into static body 2D. So now, same thing, and now we bounce around. I think that... Okay, so you can kind of see the player spinning a little bit and it's getting slower. And I think that's because I have the friction up. So we're actually going to turn the friction to zero. I'm going to run it one more time. And now I think that's better. I don't think it's getting slower and it's not spinning anymore. But we're bouncing all over the screen, which is great. We also have Polygon 2D. And we can use that to actually draw out the things that the player will be able to see. So I can draw here. Same thing as the collision shape. Let's just make this here and this here and then close it there. So now we have this shape. We can affect its color. And then, yeah, that's really all we need. And then you can grab these points and move them around whenever you want. So we've done that. Let's change its color. Well, the color's fine. It's white, I guess. Or we can make it some kind of blue, green thing. It doesn't really matter. But you have to make sure. So if I run this and I send my player off, it's just going to go right through it because there's no collision shape yet. So we want to make sure we add another collision shape, collision polygon 2D, and then you just kind of outline this shape as well. The reason that I say this is kind of hacky and not ideal is because it's going to be difficult for us to edit both of those things with a lot of accuracy because I would need to, if I wanted to change the shape, I would have to change the shape and the collision shape. It shouldn't be that bad. And there's also a little bit of like line breaking here that, you know, the graphics aren't the best right now, but we're going to look at that in a future video as well. So I think that's all I'm going to touch on in this video. It's a very basic start, but at least we have something bouncing around the screen. And in the next video, I'll start to add some polish to this, hopefully improve the graphics just a little bit, show you how to edit the colors and create maybe a unique color format for each level just by editing the colors in the code. Oh, it looks like we're getting stuck up in the corner there. But yeah, hopefully this was fun. It was meant to be kind of a simple introduction to making something a little bouncy. I don't know if that's what people want, but there it is. If you learned something new or you just enjoy watching the video, remember to hit the like and subscribe button. You can check out a few other ways to support me in the description below. I have a Patreon set up, and I actually have a Kickstarter project that's live right now that's not doing very well at all. So if you feel like helping me out, maybe you can check that out or share it with people that you know if you think they'd be interested. So thank you for watching the videos. This was a lot of fun to make, and hopefully I'll see you in the next one.